So some ideas on defending goals from cutbacks. So first of all, looking at taking the organizational structure into consideration. Whereabouts do you want your defenders to drop when they come in? So the natural reaction would be to take away the cutback option and leave the space in front. But as you can see here, against good opposition, even though there's three players and one centre forward in between, it's a free run in the goal. The fullback has time to look up. The distance of the pass isn't too far because she's driven inside. And the centre forward can just attack the space and finish his. Very similar here, the defenders drop with an eye on the centre forward. As you can see here, there's 1v3. They're very much aware of where she is. They've taken away the cutback, but they've left space in front that she can drive into, which she does and obviously scores. There's also a decision to be made if you leave too much space in behind the forward. So dropping in to the six yard box taking away the cutback option and then leaving the centre forward with four or five yards in behind. So as you can see here, the US work the ball really well. The fullback attacks well. And right now it looks as if they're in a decent defensive structure in terms of stopping the pullback. But forward gets space, time. It's a great turn. It's a great finish. Could that goal have been prevented? That was a discussion this week in the office. You also then have to be aware if you do both and you get the balance right, you then have to be aware that really good players will probably find another solution. So again, the red team have two holders recovering, three defenders, organizational structures, pretty good, but she picks a ball out to the back post. It's a great header. Looking at some potential solutions, I think distances are really important, especially after the ball's been switched or has come from one area. The weak side fullback, back to that point on the back post, making sure that the distance between the fullback and the centre back, that if the strong side get pulled out, they're able to cover each other. As you can see here, they do a good job of putting pressure on the ball. It's a decent cross. It's over the first defender. And then the distance between the covering defender was only four or five meters, which allowed her to make the challenge. Second point is the pressure from the fallback. I think we should maybe look a little bit closer at this here, which is really making it difficult and restricting the options for the wide attacker being patient but being aggressive and then this allows the quality of the cross to be affected and allows the defenders to be a bit more aggressive and then allows them maybe to find a, a teammate in transition also this is a an old clip of manchester united little pullback but this is to show the role of recovering midfielders. That was what happens if they didn't recover. This is an example from England. What happens when they do recover really, really well. As you can see. Three players have dropped into the space, takes away the cutback and now the crosser has to find a different solution. Possibly this one across the goal, but it's a very, very difficult cross to hit. And it goes over the goal, so they don't even have to defend it. Moving on now to how you would actually coach it and take it onto the training field. I think the first thing you've got to decide is what way you want your structure to be set up. So I took this from Craig Harrington and shared it today. This is what, what he's done with teams. Drops the centre back a little bit deeper and creates almost a diamond. This would be an exercise to do it. It just starts with the players out of position and challenges them to get their position 
first get organized and then defend so they have to recover the fullback has to recover and try and apply pressure this one here five stations coach calls out the number the players have to defend the ball Again, it just works on the transitional element as well. It gets them flexible with dealing with different situations. Different types of crosses. And then moving into a game situation. 7v7, halfway line. Two neutrals in the middle, two neutrals out wide. Always an attacking overload. So it will go wide pretty easily because of the additional numbers in attack. And then once the ball goes wide... It should be a challenge to recover quickly. And then the game should flow. Feel free to check out modernsoccercoach.com. Check out Coaching Your 433. More theory, more ideas. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.